All right, let's get this out onto a tray. Nice. All right, let's start off with this 100-year-old beef we found from the Civil War. Nice. Oh. Nice. Oh, God. Oh. 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 Get some more. <laughs> just, just casually smoking like 80 year old cigarettes <laughs> he's like oh yeah it's got some great flavor man Dude, shout out to mre like steve he's freaking legend yeah he always has like a spiritual experience when he smokes those vintage cigarettes welcome back uh shrimp Bars <laughs> presents number 33 right 33 that's Damn, a cool number so. All right, uh, we got a, a weird group of people. Uh, I'm drive through. Rusty's here, weird. Slab's here, Cody's here, uh, and Caleb's also here randomly. Uh, and Trace Ryder's here. Hi. What's up? What are you doing? <laughs> uh, Ed is dead in California. He, yeah. he, 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 he took some legal shrooms, and I don't think he's coming back. <laughs> I think at this point, I might be Ed's like official yeah, like I might be second string Ed at this point, basically. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you just kind of show yeah, up. Get when a Lions jersey; doesn't. you could pull it off. Yeah, put a paper. Yeah, where's bag my over Yeah, where's my head. Baker jersey? I'm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, this, you know, we don't need to introduce anyone. They all know who you are, right? Are we familiar. Nobody listens to the show anyway. Yeah, you're <laughs> That's right. That's true. <laughs> yeah, solid OGs fan base of a few hundred people. I have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, we'll just jump straight into it this week uh, with the the what's happening segment where we sort of combine the nascar talk and the twitter talk uh to start with nascar raced at auto club big auto club for the last time ever uh because Sad. they're selling half the land and getting half a billion dollars for it which makes yep. actually a lot of sense um <laughs> and i'm kind of surprised they didn't just sell the whole thing <laughs> hey, hey, honestly hey. Booming real estate market. <laughs> Drive through. We need to talk about your suggestion that you had while we were watching the race. What was that? That that instead of selling most of the land and just making oh, yeah. a tiny little if sort you're gonna track, get yeah, if you're gonna get half a billion dollars to sell half of the auto club land, just sell the whole thing, take the track, and put it somewhere else. <laughs> Done. <laughs> You know, you do see them lift those houses on trailers right down the highway. I'm sure they could fit a whole track on one of those, right? Yeah, just piece by Let's piece. You just take little pizza speedway. slices of each corner, stick it on the Push back of a truck, else. drive it out to the desert, and boom, you have your big track somewhere else. Take them out back. <laughs> Let's do a repave anyway, right? You can just take most of the stuff and move it out of there. I don't know. That's just me. Or just rebuild the same layout of the track to somewhere else. Just with, That's what I mean, like, yeah. With like $800 million, you could totally afford to do that. We don't want that just... mid-ass track back. Oh, all right. I still think Caleb, it's, yeah, you got to remember, like California was like legitimately bad for the first fifteen years of its existence. Nah. How long did it exist? Twenty-five years. That's <laughs> 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 tough. Uh, shout out to the uh, the cat that died in the Cup Series race, by the way. Oh no! What a way to go! I out. didn't hear about this. Uh, so I admittedly didn't watch California. So there are. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't blame you. There was. I a, think the American broadcast caught it. Yeah, I think there was a picture that started circling around. Yeah, the international on the one internet. got it. Got it. And then uh, people went back through the footage and saw this like black blob at the top of the track and absolutely yeah, got crazy. Can, can we talk about how like Fox was able to catch that, but not like all this other shit? Do we know who actually hit it? No. No, no, we don't. I saw people yeah, say it might be Blaney, but I don't know. Well, yeah, you said so you could see on the footage I got cream, but apparently you can't. Well, see it so Blaney. Well, we didn't see it get cream, but we saw a dead cat Slumped. on the yeah, track. Yeah, we, we saw and a live also, cat and then dead cat. There's also a picture of the track crew pulling up in a pickup truck with a broom and a bucket. Uh, <laughs> there's a shovel and a bucket. There yeah, you right. go, a shovel and a bucket. So that, yeah, that's, yeah, that was sad. It's a tough way to go out. Port no, it's kid. not. You got like, you get cup cars <laughs> to the face. I mean, One ninety. That's just insta like black. <laughs> but look at <laughs> the fucking Cheeto dust when you put your hand. <laughs> <laughs> My fault. That guy. <laughs> just front and center. I, I, hope, I hope they buried the cat where the uh, backstretch uh, was. Yeah, yeah, I can get it. It's paved just, over. Like, get back up for the industrial thing they're building. <laughs> yeah, I can get we, an Amazon we, warehouse paved over it. We need a we need a memorial for that cat like we had at Road America. <laughs> Do you remember that little that little rock tombstone for that cat they had right by our campsite that first year? Can you put at a cat the carousel? In the F one cars at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> just the, that'd be kind of sad. The last picture of that cat alive from the 
The photographer. No, I meant replace one oh, of those. No. Cat. Oh, in the car? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Immortalize it forever. Not cat hours presents. I do. We should put something else though, because we have the F1 car. I should. We should make like a different F1 car or something. Now that take work. I'm not doing all that. <laughs> I, like, I like the symmetry, which is something I'll Didn't talk. Did you about. make a stock car? No, but like a stock yeah, car on the right side. Yeah. I couldn't get the shrimp in the stock car and it not looking stupid. I tried. What? <laughs> well, then put it on the left side where like the driver side window. Sounds is like that actually would make, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah, it's drive through for you. And hey, listen, if someone wants to pay for this show, we can oh we can do God. that. You gotta, pay for time. Package. you gotta give us money for us to change the logo. We're making <laughs> sixty cents an episode, all right? Dude, <laughs> it's not about the money; it's Hell about yeah. the memories made along the way. It's not always right. about the money, Spider Man. <laughs> I mean, heck, he'd almost make more money putting doing those shorts. Mm. Find a, just find a crypto. Uh, casino that's willing to sponsor us. We'll make that's all true. the yeah. money. Yeah. Nile, where are we at? <laughs> FTX, call me I'll on the telephone. No, I won't use it, but I'll shill it. <laughs> yeah, shrimp hours presented by DC Solar coming right up. You need to sell yeah. shrimp hours NFTs. You get one frame of our stupid podcast yeah. for a hundred bucks. To, to be fair, I did make a lot of money off of DC Solar in the Liars, Thieves, and Lawyers video. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably made more money than anybody. I made a lot of money from Jimmy Johnson creaming the wall of Pocono, so these things happen. <laughs> made a lot of money from the Pixar franchise. I also made a lot of clout on Twitter this week, apparently. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's talk about what, is, what is Twitter doing? What is Twitter up to? What is Twitter Devin? doing? Twitter's being weird. Yeah. Twitter Twitter is blowing a clip up, and then Twitter is getting mad about that clip being blown up by Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter in a nutshell. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are upset that the thing that they're sharing is being shared. Unfortunate. It, it is unfortunate. Oh, no! If it isn't the consequences of my own, own actions. Yeah, it turns out going on Twitter, Twitter and telling people to be nice <laughs> doesn't make sure make a great makes reaction. Makes them just come at you like you're bullying someone. This kid didn't deserve to get bullied. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> That's those comments. Uh, the thing that, like, the, that I didn't understand about the whole thing is that it seems everybody forgot that there was a, a tweet prior to your tweet where this this person tried to make themselves look like a victim, and then yeah. they were a dick. So like, <laughs> yeah, it was weird. It was the it was one of those ones where like it hit like a hundred likes in the first hour, and I was like, I'm gonna oh. turn these notifications off. And then I wake up the next day, it's at like five hundred. The next day, it's at like seven hundred. I'm like, oh god, <laughs> oh no, oh no, uh oh. <laughs> Twitter and these, these things happen. It's listen, yeah. it's not the worst thing I've done on that website. <laughs> You're getting 700 likes. gonna be more. You have to shill out for crypto. Yeah, I'm actually making money off of each like on my tweet. That's the only reason I put anything out is is simply for the uh, the popularity Cloud. aspect. You're getting otherwise I would not be on that platform. <laughs> Isn't that wasn't that one of the things that he talked about with Blue was that you could get paid per click or something? But Bro. then all we got was more ads and less money and less features. Well, you get, you I know gotta, that once you, you hit pay eight dollars a month to put, maybe make eighty cents a month. <laughs> yeah. I know that once you hit uh, ten thousand followers on Twitter, you're basically eligible to apply for the same type of like ad partner thing on there as you do YouTube, where they basically like put ads on your tweets. Yeah, do we know anyone yeah. that has ten thousand followers? I, I got 13,000. I didn't know I could get paid. Damn. No, I was going to say. I'm going to go and apply for the Twitter advertising program. I'll right do now. it, man. I'll be putting down bad tweets out there. I'll be putting out the good <laughs> clickbait. <laughs> they might take a thorough review through your tweet history and might have a couple questions. <laughs> I don't know. 13,000. God damn. <laughs> Dude, after I made that last video, like the short track tour, I told people to like follow me for updates. And like, dude, it was like. 400 new followers like within two hours yeah i do appreciate being referred to as your friends uh about your indie trip mm. exciting <laughs> i think it's my second shout out in a slap video that one guy from the outlet podcast yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> short-lived <laughs> outlet podcast <laughs> uh that is pretty exciting though the slap short track tour of america where you're basically sacrificing pretty much every single weekend in the summer <laughs> I mean, I guess not sacrificing because you're still going to racetracks, but you're going to be like videoing and like almost working, you know? 
Yeah, so uh, I'm writing all this off on taxes. This is one big tax write-off scheme. <laughs> <laughs> the funny part is we think he's joking. <laughs> I'm getting invited on just so I can be an accessory. I see how it is. This is called this is called the fuck the IRS tour. <laughs> At least this isn't on record anywhere. Yeah, yeah. because nobody watches this show. Yeah, yeah. recording this or anything. <laughs> Shout out to the uh, the Google speech to text machine. Appreciate you listening in. I like to say it's up to my NSA agent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we gonna switch gears at a drip or drown? We're gonna switch gears. Why not? Drown. Yeah. All right, so I only have one stock car to show off this week, um, right. and I've got the perfect picture of it. it. Tyler of Tyler Rennick is running a special Monster Energy scheme. This is the thing that, that drives me insane about monster schemes is that like in any other sport they look good in the NASCAR they're like no nah, we just want a black car and we're just gonna stick a couple monster stick on it like he could have bought those decals at a store and just slapped them on the car dude I <sighs> well that's what I'm wondering if that's what they did they brought out a black car and just put on little pieces pull up, pull up that J ski link that you had last week of all the schemes we had this week because there were some bangers this week. The there scheme. were what? particularly Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski some, had a good one. Yeah, they had some banger schemes. Track they do, oh, thing. they did do an auto club thing. I'm stupid. I did not look at this. Hold on. Right. Great Stole. job. Great. There producer. we go. Mm. They That's added a little usual. thing on the Quaker State car. Oh yeah, I said this to yeah. DT. It was interesting. That's uh, the last year bear. That's last year good wrench. Dude, there this Brad go. car, Ooh. the Castrol Ooh, Black love. Brad car. Mm, best but RFK car. From numbers. I don't know why. I do. Uh, we Lucas about Lucas Oil. Yeah, we talked about that last week. That's right. The sport clips. I the like sport the chrome red tough. numbers. That's Dude, the, the glossy metallic red looks great. Uh, worth. Also there, known as I chrome. Um, what is on JJ Yaley's car? Act one group. Okay. Um, this is tough. This 16 yeah. car is brutal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like they're, they're missing something. Missing tires. I know, we, I know we talked about that 17 already. I like it. I like it's not. It's, it's okay. It's, I just, it's not I as like good as the one that they the had. Pink. Yeah, the gray with the pink and the purple. It's like a. Well, really they had that cool black and orange and yellow one. And these then colors are way better. They yeah, sponsored these, the these race and colors. then used the colors that were on the original car as like the race branding. So I'm. I don't know. Talk about the BJ McLeod car from last year. I did not no. know that car ran right there. The 19. Yeah, Back it's in 26 horrible. 26 all day. Uh, Series XM's okay. This is all standard. I, I, I like that Joey one. That one's yeah. We talked about that when they released oh, it. Oh, we yeah. did. Okay, okay. They they made the number outlines thinner on this twenty three. Yeah, which I'm not looks a fan, horrible. dude. Yeah. I don't know why the decision was yeah, made. Yeah, bleeds bleeds into the yellow. Yeah, there's a plain black monster car. Um. Oh, here's a fun fact that I'm sure literally no one else paid attention to. Um. The TRD red stripe on the 23XI cars is oh. halfway up the skirt, which is how it was when they originally announced the Camry, but Joe Gibbs since then has always been putting the red stripe along the top edge of the skirt. It's just weird that 23XI is kind of on like the legacy version of that. I'm not they really sure They also have why. a history of botching their rap, so I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know who's doing it right. So here's here's where the red stripe is on the, the 19 car. It's like right up against the, the skirt. The TRD logo is higher. Anyway, just a tidbit. Once again, I'm sure no one else noticed that. <laughs> no, it was oh, there. And Silvers. <laughs> no. I, hope, I hope Cozy runs the. He's, I hope he's running that tomorrow. I don't know. I I've never eaten there. If Cozy runs runs that car, I might have to like break my uh, one moral code. I like that. There's a platter. They're racing at Milwaukee this week too. Hmm. Like cars. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The no. Coke series. No. It's a Coke series, bro. I like the addition of the watermelon texture on the 99 numbers in that Suarez car. What? Mm. The the 99s are like watermelon skins, if you look closely. On Suarez's car? Why would they be like that? I don't know, but if it is, if you look closely. Is it? Yes. I think it's I just chrome. It's chrome, bro. On some of the runners I saw, it was water. That's weird. Huh. That's definitely a Ross Chastain yeah. thing, right? I'm not just, I, 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 I realize it's a Ross Chastain thing, but I thought it was something they were bringing to all of Trackhouse because of Chastain sponsorship. But I, no. I guess, I guess some of the renders I saw were in. That's car, fucking mm. hot. 
Yeah. Hot. Hey, real quick, shout out to the uh, the, the mm. Legacy Motorcycle Club cars that <laughs> by the end of the race, their wraps were just coming off the front of the car. No, that's um, badass. That's racing. That looks that's sick. sick. Cool. Damn. These are some really good pictures. James Armas tweeted these. Um, that's fucking cool, though. They just got like sand blasted, basically. They bounce off the damn track so much. Yeah. But yeah, it's like tearing on the front seam. You can see the, the inside of it. That's awesome. Uh, apologies again to our audio listeners. Um, you know. The wrap is coming off. That's all you need to know. Yeah. It looks like Dirty we're through a sand cars, blaster. So that's, sick. that's badass. I mean, it basically did go sandblasting at 200 miles an hour around that place. Probably the coolest thing the next-gen car has done so far. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I want to go on to the sort of bulk drip or drown, and then I want to go into some F1 talk, because the season starts next week. Uh, Bahrain Are they racing Grand Prix. in Australia, or is they reschedule it? Uh, they're doing Bahrain. Bahrain, for- Saudi, then Australia. Which is like a little bit annoying, but and then Miami's can... like fifth on the schedule, I think this year. Dude, the schedule's bizarre. It's like hey, which... bananas. So I don't know who designed that. It's awful. It makes no sense. In June, they're like all over Europe. Then they come to Montreal for a week. Then they go straight back to Europe. They didn't tie it in with anything else. I think the only thing that makes sense is they go. Well, they're going Austin, from Bahrain... Mexico, Brazil, Las Vegas, or something like that. They're doing Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Australia, and then Azerbaijan, and then Miami. To be fair, Australia, you, know, you can't really hook it up with anything else except maybe, like, Japan, I guess. I thought that's why they started with it every year is because it's so hard to get to and do anything. Yeah. But I, I guess they want, like, testing and the, the first race to happen at the same place. It's kind of weird. Um. Anyway, real quick, Drip or Drown, talk about some paint schemes. Uh, Red Bull. Yawn. It's the same. same. All right, next up, it's Ferrari. It's been the same for, like, ten years. <laughs> I learned some things. Okay. Uh, why so much black is on the, the grid this year? Because Wait. it's not actually rep. It's just straight up carbon fiber. That black on the servo there is just carbon yeah. fiber. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's I'll just, be right back. Same they're, with doing up on that. There. they're doing that because the engines weigh a whole kilo more this year, so they have to redistrib- redistribute the weight. And then to do that, they have to do weird shit with the paint scheme. Yeah, it's not usually a problem because the, there's always like a a minimum weight requirement. Where, uh, like, if they they can't just make their cars lighter, mm-hmm. um, they'd have to like add weight to it. But now teams are like struggling to meet the minimum. The cars are too heavy, so they're cutting, they're cutting wraps. Yeah, this and actually like, looks kind of sick, though. I, I like the Ferrari. Like, Ferrari can get away with doing relatively the same thing every year. Same thing with Mercedes. They they the yellow they did for uh, Monza, I think. Monza last year was pretty know. cool. I would like to see them do like some one-off stuff. That would be cool. But they can get away with the red every year. It looks nice. Yeah, this looks sick. I wish the I wish the black connected to something else. Like it just kind of looks. What do you like, mean around the Richard Milley? Uh, where the where the Seva is Seva. Oh, Seva. oh yeah. It like flowed in a little bit better. It looks like they just cut it out and were like, no, nah, you're getting a belt of carbon fiber background. I kind of like it. It kind of like adds something there. I'm a fan. I think Ferrari did a good job. It's, it's um, the same car, man. Just maybe a better red. <laughs> Come on, keep it moving. Like, all right, Mercedes is black car, again. Black and black and dedicated to not having side pods, which I don't understand. Everybody well, supposedly pods. they're working on a like a, a different sort of side pod design, and they might be flying it down to Bahrain for the first race, which people kind of expect them to bring it in later this season, but that's just rumors. I, I, what I thought you were going to say is that they're like expecting to work on the car and and have it be the only side podless good car, but like they well, only in place till twenty twenty five. So the only side podless car, period. So it would be the only good one. It's weird that they've gone their own way and it hasn't really worked out. Uh, McLaren, by the way, less car than usual. This blue sucks. I don't know why oh, they switched to this blue, but the old blue was great. Oh, like oh, Do you like their indie car schemes? This is this is a banger. Yeah, the indie car. The indie it's car. okay. I'm glad that they actually have the orange tail this year. Instead of just yes. showing off and then being like, nope, we're not doing that. They also got Jack Daniels on there. Shout out. I just noticed yeah, that. that. Are those like Google Chrome wheels? Yeah, those are Chrome Google wheels Chrome are wheels. weird. Because Chrome's their main sponsor. This is not what I meant when I said I want Chrome wheels. <laughs> yeah, that is, that's, I took that a little bit too literally. I want some Firefox yeah. wheels. That would be clever, and that's probably why they'll never do it. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of teams that are putting funny stuff on their wheel covers now. 
Like here's the uh, here's the Alpine. The pink. Yeah, that's cute. They're gonna Which run is the still from the back. Still the best looking car on the on the mm. on the grid. There's an this old pink version. Sick. They're gonna run while they're in the Middle East. Yeah, three. they did that last year. The first two races, they ran all pink, which was sick. Um, like they're doing cute them. stuff on their wheels, too. I guess yeah. that's just kind look, of the trend. Yeah, look, it's different front and back. Like, I dig that. Oh, yeah, the back one's a bit more pink. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I like, like the as, little pattern they've got pink on later. the back of their, their wrap. I don't know, it looks cool. The blue and the pink, mm, it's so good. I'm very happy with it. At LP. The best looking car on the grid. A plus. They're running mm, against all French. Slap. French game, two French drivers. <laughs> Slap, you can't say that. You tried. <laughs> uh, Alpha Romeo. It's, it's oh, sick. I've not seen this. It's it's okay. Why is the nose wing a fucking staircase? <laughs> they all are. <laughs> this just dynamic this, slap. That picture just accentuates it a bit. Um, they've gone black instead of white because not black. putting anything on it is saving weight. This, this um, is giving me Tony Stewart to, Old Spice vibes. Shout out to Steak Crypto Casino. You can sponsor the Stream Browers podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like it. I'd like a piece of that money uh, if you could. Um, up I'm close, just gonna say, this thing with... looks sick because of the, the bare wheels. carbon. I'm into the wheel covers. They had those I, last year, I think. Did they? Yeah. I just can't believe we're shaving like branding and paint schemes like for like just like a sliver of weight. That, that to me, that's ridiculous. Like, it's insane. what are we doing? It is insane. It's be, it's because they're they changed a couple of regulations over the offseason that involved weight in weight distribution. So now they have to cut weight wherever they can. I this looks pretty paint sick. Schemes. It's not as good as the white one, but it's pretty sick. In reality, I say we fill the cockpit with molten lead and just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, next up, we're jumping through these. Alpha Tari um, the hell is added this? a little bit of red. <laughs> no, that's I love cute. A little bit of red. The neon red is hot. I, don't I like, like it. it. I, I like it. it a lot. They put cute wheel things on it, too. It clashes. I don't like it. No, I do. It's, it's hot. The wheel things are nice. I like that. One of a highlight, though, is it's supposed to pop. Uh, dude, this gives yeah. me big, like, craftsman truck vibes, like, <laughs> with the giant red banner on yeah. it. Oh, no. At least this, like, they sort of distribute it. Like, it's on the rear wing, it's on the halo, it's on the barge boards, it's kind of all over the place. And it's on the, the whiskers. I don't did mind a good job it. with that logo, too, on the, like, the intake. Yeah. Uh, intake. The side where it goes pod? All the way down. Man, yeah. this is what I was talking yeah. about earlier. I wish they would just do the same font on the front wing instead of doing the, the actual logo. If we could yeah, but that's just their branding. Alpha. You can barely read Alpha. <laughs> it's like, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I also like they have little Italian things on the That's inside. Cute. That's cute. Uh, yeah. End plates. Big um, cute car. Next up, Haas looks sick. Yeah, Haas the best. I car like it a lot. Best looking car this year. Um, um, big ass money gram oh, thing on the side. The that, that looks like a Penske car in uh, IndyCar. The Verizon. It, color. it does look a lot like a Verizon Penske. That's car. my favorite color combo: the black and the white with the red trim. Mm. Mm. I love that they traced the the side pod with the white. Yeah, because there's a pocket right there where that the black is. It's a pocket that dips down. F1 Every really is going black, hard. huh? That's kind of crazy. yeah. And carbon fiber. You know they say once you and go, they can't go back. Yeah. <laughs> um, Aston Martin. Yellow. It's the same car, less yellow. They they were bragging that they don't have to worry about weight, and it shows in their design because mm. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of paint on this thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it I looks great. Color, I love that color. I love that uh, neon yellow highlight that matches the uh, wheels or the yeah, tires. The, soft, the, uh, the medium tires on this actually look great, matching the, the big old stripe. They had more neon last year than they do this year. Did Plus, they? Yeah, they did. What did they change? Uh, the Aston Martin logo used, was on the airbox, and it was neon, and there was a couple other. Oh, things. yeah, yeah, yeah. They even have that trim on the inside of the little front uh, wheel protectors. Yeah, the, the yeah. whisker there. Uh, yeah. It's cute. I like it a lot. It looks sick. Imagine and if it, it was reactive paint and it would change color for the. It is pretty metallic. Tires. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty hot. Like on on track, it's pretty hot. Yeah, I, and this is just kind of a flex, just putting this much paint on the F1 car. I mean, I know the wings are still bare, but it looks yes, good. Which is wild. <laughs> In twenty twenty three, a big flex is just going out and buying toilet paper and eggs. <laughs> and, and, and now an F one, a big flex is like, look how much paint we got. <laughs> They're also trying something cute on the wheels. Uh, and then lastly, but it's definitely the not one. least. It's the same car. <laughs> Dude, there's one simple feature in this 
design that makes it the greatest. Are you on a the battery grid. guy? That's I'm a terrible. big battery guy. That thing is that thing is the hottest thing I've ever seen. They in had my that life. last year, but yeah, it's sick. sick. That's, I was I didn't, I didn't notice that at first, and then you zoom in, it says Duracell. It's got Those arrows yeah, and the wheels are cute too. Yeah. I was watching some uh, some testing highlights, and I didn't notice it until I they came around the corner. I was like, is that a fucking battery on the airbox? Dude. That's really from the side. It, it looks so exactly good. Exactly like the battery. It's just clever marketing. That, um, yeah, so yeah, true. shout out to uh, to Williams and <laughs> Duracell. <laughs> just straight up a battery. Oh good. <laughs> it's I just hope the car does better than shit Wait, here. Who's driving those cars? Because I I might uh, have a new favorite driver. American Logan Sargent. There we go. Dal Dalton Sargent's brother is racing an F1. Shout out. Are they actually related? I thought it was just a last name. No, they're literally brothers. Wow. God damn! Y'all remember Dal uh, Dalton Sargent? Yeah, Shout for out. the GMS in the trucks. Yep, in that the the pure performance or whatever. What? what yeah, it was, was the that? 24, I think. 25, wasn't it? Yeah, 25 performance plus motor oil. Freaking uh, this thing. This guy's brother <laughs> is racing it's an F1, F1 now. Oh my god! Washed up Shout truck out. driver's brother. Uh, also, Alex Albon's in that car. Yeah, Alex Alabama's the other one. But yeah, Americans have someone to cheer for now. Uh, and welcome. You I can mean, all join me in the back of the pack club as we root for Williams. <laughs> yeah, has there been any that, uh, headway yeah. on that Andretti team? Or is that dead? They're like they're working on it still. I know all I the saw, other teams got pissed. I think yeah. uh, I think they're trying to aim for the next regulations to be in, so like twenty five, twenty six. Yeah, which is yeah. about when Audi and Porsche are coming in too, right? Yeah. I saw something that Red Bull wanted Alpha Tauri to move to Let me try to find this article <laughs> real fast, but yeah, they wanted Alpha Tauri to move to wherever Red Bull was, which was apparently like not a thing when they first got the team. Yeah, you can't do that. Alpha Tauri is um they're still based in Italy where uh Minardi was cuz that's the team that you know red bull bought out and became toro rosso and is now alpha tari one of two i think actually italian teams yeah along uh, with Ferrari. i'll put this tweet right here but it says the new red bull management determined that the results and the marketing value doesn't justify the high cost so the team either has to be moved to england or it uh, could be sold damn cool. i think they'll sell it Probably, yeah, any, yeah any italian manufacturers want an f1 team real quick I mean, with all the it's all easy the and interest, it'll be e an easy sell. Easy sell. They're a relatively competitive midfield team. The easy sell. Their new car is not looking so hot. I think they're going to be down there this year. Yeah. They were P nine in the constructors last season, and they're they've just been like not great in testing. McLaren yeah, says... shit too. Dude, McLaren fucked it. I think all three days, they were like duct taping their uh the the wheeled things yeah they, they, their their carbon fiber wasn't strong enough the actual systems were falling apart they they literally bolted a plate to the inside of it to like keep it from from bending it was um, wild. and they they i think are the only team that like really messed up yeah if they dropped the ball for sure lando was not happy yeah it's yeah, it's legitimately not looking good because you only get three days of testing and, and they get so much data. It's so important to turn laps and McLaren fucked it all three days. McLaren did like no laps. <laughs> Compared to... Um, but uh, Aston Martin and Williams funny. are looking good. Aston Martin was really surprising. Uh, also, uh, Joe from Alfa, Alfa Romeo was on the top of the board. For P2? Yeah, yeah, he ended up P2, I think, on, on day two. Uh, what? Uh, no. He was P1. He might have been fastest. Yeah, he, he, he did end up fastest. One. It was P1. It was wild. I couldn't believe that uh, that he did it. I do love me some some Guan Yu Joe. That guy's sick. I mean, it's not the guy that flipped, is it? It is the guy that. That flipped. is the guy that oh. flipped. <laughs> and yeah, the... he flipped his dick off. He jumped the fence. He literally oh. did flip his dick off. Oh, yeah. well, speaking of failed. which, I'm gonna tie in a little bit of media check in. Trace, have you how how far are you in to drive to survive? Uh, I stopped watching like. Two seasons ago. Oh god damn it! it, it god damn it! So the new season bad, came out on Friday, and I'm three episodes in, and it's fucking great. I really it's, like it. Like there was a while there where everything was fabricated, and I was bored as shit, and I hated it. Yeah, I I just didn't like that it came out like a week before the season started. I got like halfway through the season, and then 
why would I watch like last year's stuff instead of right. F1 now? Right. I'm trying to get through it before this season starts uh, with my dad. It's really good. I really, really like it. Um, it is like dr dramatized. Um, but I, if you're not like a dumb kid on Twitter who can't see through it, then I think it's I think it's really great. I mean, it's been phenomenal for the sport. And I uh, still, oh God, I, I still know, see man. so many people complaining about it on Twitter too. I don't like... know, we watched the 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 Oscar worthy movie The Sim Racer, and I don't know if I'm <laughs> ever gonna compare to that ever again. <laughs> how good that movie was, I just don't think I can watch TV or film anymore. The only clip I've ever seen of Drive to Survive was of that uh, the Grosjean crash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly. And as he like punches through the wall, they took like a clip of someone else saying shit. <laughs> and like made it sound like Grosjean was saying it as he's like crashing. It's like, what, what are we doing here? Why? Like, just just show that crash. Like, it speaks for itself. Yeah, like, why are we? Love, like... Why are we creating like phony editing? Like to, like just show the footage. Like that. It works. Insane. It, it works. In the the end. number one yeah. rule of documentary making is to come in with a narrative, and <laughs> and then just craft everything to support that narrative. They they Dude, deliver on the story. Show on. It's uh, totally it's, worth it's, it. It's only if you like. <laughs> Like, if you know about weird little radio things like that, like, that show's not meant for you, you know? You're already watching the, the F1. I think it's completely Fair fine enough. for... Yeah, it's... I mean, I, that show's just for the casual fan. Yeah, it's what Not it's really, because I really like it, and I've been watching F1 oh. since I didn't know what was going on, so... <laughs> I love, like, every time there's a wreck in that TV show... It's instant crowd pop, like trailer explosion Ooh. noise. <laughs> like <laughs> It's sick. It's great. I love it. I, I genuinely love it. I heard uh, Max actually came on the show this season for like the first time or something. Yeah, like he got pissed because they were like uh, just making stuff up. And then they're like, OK, we'll stop doing that if you come back on. And then his team, there's also a lot of pressure for him <laughs> to come on because there's a ton of marketing value behind it. Yeah. I mean, he's like um, a guy now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Gunther it's... Steiner is a star. I, a drive to survive is the only reason that guy has a job. I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> he Haas has been a goddamn garbage dumpster fire for years now. Even with the new listen, red they get a top six in the first race of every year and then do nothing else. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they they, do, they declare the car done. Twenty three other races. Fuck it. We don't got to do shit. Leave that car on track. I don't care what. I don't care how many parts Mercedes changed this week. We're not doing nothing. This car got sixth on the first race of the season. We gotta do it again. <laughs> I I think we've talked about this before, but has there ever been a single like athlete in major like mainstream motorsports to ever won eight championships? Because Lewis got to seven, and all of a sudden Max Rose? starts taking uh, over. I think, I think Frank Kimmel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure exactly. Sebastian Arca was Lowe. good, man. I'm pretty sure Sebastian Loeb got nine World Rally Championships in a row. Because it's like Michael Jordan, seven. Tom Brady, Yeah, he did. He seven. got nine in Lewis a row. Lewis Hamilton, seven. It's like... Bitch. Okay, okay. Sebastian Loeb, nine World Rally Championships in a row. That guy's unstoppable. Yeah, I think, we have, I think we have talked about that before. That guy's nuts. So it's going to reignite the he conversation. The, uh, didn't was... Richie Evans win the Modified Championship like eight times in a row? Who cares about the modified? I mean, I'm talking major, like <laughs> I'm not talking about like some local, like. <laughs> is it local? Like, this is all over the U.S. Fuck you! Did uh, Dude, we're doing the... sixty races a okay, week? Okay, some grassroots. Or sixty races series. a year, my bad. Sixty races. You know a what week. I mean? <laughs> sixty races a year, yeah. Did uh, did Rally change their points format like six times to try to stop Loeb from just winning all of no, them? No, because they're not <laughs> stupid. Yeah, well, it's like what NASCAR did to Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> yeah, they're not NASCAR with Jimmy Yeah, just, yeah how did that just, work out? Dude, it's so funny, like, seeing F1 with Drive to Survive, and I feel like NASCAR's gone through, like, eight dramatic TV show reiterations. Dude, everyone's like, trying. There's, like, tennis shows now. There's, like, there's shows about <laughs> specific soccer clubs. And, like, everyone wants a little piece of it. I saw one about Scott Dixon at the Detroit Grand Prix and I was like yeah y'all like who the fuck is watching this shout out to the two Scott Dixon fans 
Uh, all right. <laughs> if we're all good on racing talk, uh, we're going to take a break because it's time for Slaps. Crazy ass. Oh, yeah. Moments. It's time for Slaps. Crazy ass moments in history. I love Ben. Oh my god. Ben absolutely did not have to go that hard for that opening, but he did <laughs> anyway. He did. It's intense, dude. <laughs> it's crazy. I remember the, first, the first time DT like busted that out, I'm like shitting my pants and Rusty's like oh. <laughs> Ed was going nuts too. Shout out to Ben. We love Ben. All right. So the day is January 19th, 1991. It is the third day of Operation Desert Storm. Oh, boy. <laughs> what was supposed to be the largest airstrike uh, of the war ended up being a complete failure. They didn't hit a single thing, but one man pulled off the craziest set of maneuvers ever in United States Air Force history. This is the Stroke 3 incident during Package Q strike in January 19th, 1991. Let's go ahead and get into it. So the idea is there's going to be this massive airstrike over Baghdad targeting a nuclear facility and uh, a downtown fuel reserve. Uh, previously up to this point, every single airstrike had been uh, F-117 Nighthawks and cruise missiles because Baghdad was perhaps the most heavily defended city on planet Earth. Dude, those things look so sick. They are. The Nighthawks are yeah. fucking creepy. The Nighthawks, uh, the American propaganda says they were invisible to radar. You could actually pick them up. It was just really hard to tell exactly where they were and how fast they were going. So uh, all the F-117 pilots, you know, they, they would report like, hey, there are some rounds that are getting kind of close. Like, they obviously know that we're here. Uh, but none of them ever got shot down. At least not in that war. There was a Serbian dude who shot one down over Kosovo in 1999. That's a, sure. That's that's, that's, that's story story on? different time. Isn't that what behind enemy lines is based on? Yeah, with uh Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson, yeah, <laughs> fucking oh. Lightning McQueen himself. <laughs> <It's> a really <laughs> cow. <laughs> cow. <laughs> But uh, on the third day of the air war of Desert Storm, uh, that eventually uh, U.S. military command says we're going to go in guns blazing. They they uh, scramble seventy three F sixteens, uh, a number of F one eleven radar jamming planes, and a bunch of F four Phantom, what they called wild weasels. These were the planes that are supposed to fly in first, low as possible to the ground and draw enemy fire away from the F-16s who were supposed to come in and do the main strike. So they all these F-16s, all these planes take off from Qatar. They're supposed to rendezvous with these KC-130 uh, refueling planes flying over Saudi Arabia, and then they go into uh, Baghdad to do this strike on uh, the nuclear facility down there, the Tuwaitha Nuclear Research Center, uh, just outside, just south of Baghdad. And that's the main focus of the strike. Uh, the thing was, uh, the Iranians during the Iran-Iraq war had tried to take this out. The uh, uh, Israelis had also tried to do an airstrike, uh, an offensive airstrike back in the 80s. Uh, and so this is probably the second most heavily defended place on planet Earth, when it's right next to Baghdad, the most heavily defended place on planet Earth. And uh, since uh, all these planes are coming into this research center, uh, which is south of Baghdad, once they do their airstrike, they have to go north and then go over Baghdad and then come back down. So they have to go over two of the most heavily defended places in the entire country. So, and also, they're not stealth aircraft. The Iraqis, the moment they cross the border, they know they're coming. And they know a lot of them are coming. Uh, the KC 130s are doing their orbits, are refueling everybody. The weather is awful. There's four F. Uh, 16s that just could not get enough fuel, so they have to turn back and go back. So now we're down to uh, 69. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, so they decide to go ahead, go through. Uh, 
by the time they get to the nuclear facility, it is covered in a cloud of smoke. Uh, the Iraqis had brought in all these smoke generators so that it just made this massive fog over the area. They kind of sort of knew where it was from GPS location and all that. But, you know, this, this is not the laser guided bombs of, you know, the 2000s. This is still conventional bombs that are just dropped from a, a computer telling you where you should let off at. And uh, so there's a lot of guesswork, and immediately all these anti-aircraft cannons open up, all these missiles are getting fired at them. A lot of guys don't drop their ordnance because there's a lot of civilians centers around the area, and they don't know exactly where they are, so they just break off. Guys are, are there's almost one mid-air collision between two F-16s. <laughs> The guys are just freaking out, just scrambling all over the place. The wild weasels that were supposed to come in and draw off all that uh, uh, anti-aircraft fire, they ran out of gas and had to turn back. They never got there. So the Damn. F-16s are going in raw. <laughs> 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 Unlubed. Uh <laughs> So <laughs> while all this is going on, all this disarray, like this, you know, almost 70 F-16s are not dropping their bombs where they should be. Everybody breaks off except for one guy, Major Emmett Tulia. He, that's him with his uh, tech sergeant there, his crew chief that's supposed to look over the plane. Uh, he goes off, takes off, uh, circles around the area, tries to get away, hits the afterburners to get away, decides to come back and do actually do his drop-off where he's supposed to. He's the only guy who scores a hit on the facility, by the way. It wasn't enough to take it out, but he's the only guy who scored a hit out of, you know, 70-something planes that went up there. Uh, but he is now alone. He is the only plane in the sky. Every single missile battery starts tracking him and opens up on him. There's one SA-2 missile that's like a Vietnam-era missile system. It gets a lock on him. He deploys flares. That didn't work. He deploys his chaff. That didn't work. So he banks right at the last second, and it misses. Holy shit. Uh, he gets a second missile off from an SA-6. This is a more advanced, more modern uh, missile with a better tracking system. He doesn't even see it coming, and his wingman had gone back to, to look over him. Uh, his wingman, Jeff Tice, Major Jeff Tice, and he says, stroke three, stroke three, break left, break left now. And then he does, and he misses the second missile. Three more missiles come up, and uh, Major Tulia keeps deploying flares and countermeasures, and he's bobbing and weaving. At one point, he took a load of 6.3 Gs sustained over the period of about 15 seconds. Oh. Uh, the, the whole ordeal lasted about six okay. and a half, half minutes. Up. He he averaged about 3.6 Gs across 15 or six and a half minutes. And there's a fourth. Pass out. There's a, 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 a you can actually like find the video on online of him, like actually as it happened, the gun cam and him talking and he's like out of breath. He's it, it, he's stressed out of his mind. And Doing that he, thing where they're trying to force blood back into their brain, like <laughs> that fucking weird. Thing yeah. And all you hear, all you hear is him mostly just, just, just breathing into like the microphone and is like, uh, uh, air intake mask. That's just all you hear, and everybody's like, <laughs> "Stroke three, what's your status? Stroke three, what's your status?" And then he finally gets enough breath that says, "Egressing south." Uh, and then a fifth and a sixth missile come up. He outmaneuvers both of those, and uh, he eventually gets away. No damage to his aircraft. Two F-16s were shot down. Um, Holy so shit! <laughs> Holy fuck! Sound like barrel rolls. It's like a GTA when you're just spamming the joystick to avoid the missiles coming at you. Yeah, that's him saying he's trying to get away. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. This Holy is intense. Fuck. He's just swerving. Just hoping those things go past him. And How much do each wing. of these missiles cost? Yes. <laughs> just 
Just probably about a hundred thousand dollars. No big deal. No, it is yeah, one fucking more. yeah. This one fucking F sixteen wasted like. Sorry, that was probably the cost of one wing for one of them. Six <laughs> billion Iraqi dollars fucking wasted on this <laughs> one little fighter jet. Launcher. You got to pay for the missiles that go in the launcher. You got to pay for the dudes to run the launcher. All the fucking trails. The trails. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Do a whole That's him about to pass out right there. It's a good Darth Vader impression. Yeah, he, dude, he, he's just banking this damn plane so quickly to avoid these missiles. He's about to pass out from the G forces. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. I wonder if he had somebody telling him to hit his marks. <laughs> uh, Strip through your mic so I'm gonna hear you breathing into your mic. <laughs> yeah, mute yourself, yeah, bud. You, yeah, you know the mouth breather in Discord. <laughs> <laughs> These things happen. <laughs> Oh my dude, that's intense. That so, footage is crazy. So Stroke that's 3 actually insane. makes it back to Qatar without any major issues after that. Uh, he gets down there and his uh, crew chief uh, is looking over the plane. And uh, he's saying like, yeah, I deployed all these countermeasures. It didn't seem to stop him. And then his crew chief says, your countermeasures never deployed. There was a jam up. You, oh my God. You outmaneuvered six missiles by just manual flight alone. Holy shit. So he, he gets a distinguished uh, service cross for his troubles and uh, is basically a this was like real life type uh, top gun. You know, he, he's like the biggest badass in the Air Force after this. And look at this fucking G. Look at him. Yeah. The beast. All five feet of him. <laughs> he's uh, they say that, like, smaller people can sustain more G forces. Well, it's not only that is that the, the cockpits are really small. So like the smaller people and tend to be pilots. It's not the size of the fighter jet that not, you use no. it, Trace. I think we got a job for Ben. I wanted to be an F-16 pilot when I was in, like, eighth grade. <laughs> uh, because I wanted to be a Thunderbird. And if you've ever seen the Thunderbirds, they're just fancy painted F-16s. Uh, yeah. Be a Thunderbird, you have to be, un like, within a certain height window. And I think it's, like, 5'3 to 5'9 or something like that. Because, like, when they walk out in unison, they need everybody to, to look the same. Because... No, that's not the only reason, is it? No. I, that's, that's, that's what I can remember. Now, keep in mind, I've been clocked in the head too many times, so... <laughs> <laughs> These things happen. I missed that by a good, like, half a foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Caleb will never be allowed to fly a fighter jet. And <laughs> yeah, not for the... Yeah, I don't think he should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to have a college degree to be a pilot in the Air Force anyway. Really, you can't just get in with a damn. GED. Hey, I'm, getting, I'm going no, in. With... You, you can if you go through the uh, warrant officer program. Hey, I mean, I can handle stress pretty well. I, I did work at McDonald's. I did my time. <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he did show the world how to get free McDonald's. I'm gonna enlist. Oh, I'm gonna enlist. I'm gonna I'm gonna sign up. I'm gonna go to officer school, and I'm gonna sing show tunes with my theater degree as I fly an F-16. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, just imagine being the Iraqi uh, air defense coordinator and just watching this one F-16 <laughs> dodge six missiles. What are these pictures from, Slap? What is this? That is the uh, anti-aircraft fire from Baghdad during the first day of uh, the air campaign. Damn. And then what the fuck is this? That's the nuclear facility. You... Oh, oh yeah, okay. Shout out to the dirt mound. That'll protect us from the radiation. <laughs> yeah, not a problem. What's this? That is one of the downed F-16s. Damn. Oh, shit. There were two F-16s that were down. Both pilots survived, became POWs, and as soon as the war was over with, is that uh, they, got, they got returned home. What the fuck home. is that? Good. Are you stupid? Where? Under the, like, main part of it. Like, you see right where, like, the wing starts? Yeah, what the fuck it's is a that? hose. All right. Is that a light? What? Shit, I don't know. That's the cat at? from California. I'm looking at it for, <laughs> through like a Discord cat. stream right now. You gotta, you gotta give me a Caleb, break. Oh, in the fair. tail section. You don't sit in the tail section of an airplane. Well, the, the front <laughs> part got, got fucking blown the fuck up. I don't know where he went. That million goddamn pieces. Yeah, that's a F4 Wild mm. Weasel getting refueled by KC-135. Refuelings just blow my uh, mind. Yeah, my that's fucking. 
I can't believe the F4s had the refueling like behind the cockpit. How are you even supposed to know where the hell you are? You don't. Yeah. You get guided in. So there's a guy in the boom. So my dad used to be an Air, was an Air Force maintainer. He worked on 141s, KC10s, and one and a couple 135s as well. Um, so you get to sit in there. There's somebody like at the boom control, and you have a radio contact between the two of you, and you and he would guide you in at that point if you can't see where the where you have to be. Those guys never put it in the wrong hole. I was gonna say it must be nice having someone to help you guide it in. <laughs> have you ever seen, seen that fucking video of the uh i think it was a pavlo or something is trying to like refuel with a big boom sticking out and it like tries to overcorrect and it chops its own refueling probe off yep I've seen them that's before we decided to just like attach them to the body work on airplanes where it's just like slide in and there's a backstop on it so the hose will stop when it hits they used to have the big old scoops on the front though they look like a like a turbo almost Oh yeah, the uh, A6 uh, intruder had that little probe that, like stuck out of the front. And, like, yeah. All right, well, that's some crazy ass moments. Six hundred miles an hour. That's up there, fucking. That's yeah. crazy. That footage was nuts, dude. Yeah, it was a crazy ass moment in history. It was. All right, on to the next. Yo, Slap, where did Buckers oh. go? I don't see him. Up I don't have the chair here anymore. I don't have the chair anymore. So Buck, Buckers is like around, but he's oh, like out of, out of frame. I, I, I forgot one part about the story, though. Really God quick. Uh, after all his maneuvers, uh, Tulia was almost out of fuel. He wasn't going to make it. And then an AC-135 actually went into Iraqi airspace to come get him to fuel him up and get him back. And a KC-135 has no air defense measures whatsoever. So this was like pretty risky for him. But shouts out to that KC-135 pilot for- Animal you know, going... planet time now. Yeah, I know. Still, he, he deserves to be remembered. He's All a right, brave motherfucker. The... Brought him shut, the, shut the fuck up, Slap. It's Animal Start Planet. Start the music again. Start the music again. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Speaking of turkeys, I found another turkey on route today. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> yeah, it's on the the slap channel. Little short that I have. I just put it up. Like I recorded it and put it up there on my secondary channel. The thing is, like you the... I don't know. <laughs> These are everywhere. Down bad for me. Oh, it's dead. What? We're good. It was almost. Oh. Dead. Yeah, it almost died. It took a break. It's it, was just, it was just buffering for a second. <laughs> did, you, did you smoke it, slap, and leave it for the uh, neighborhood to get a bucket and a shovel? Makes no, tricky, no, tricky. but it was like trying to like chase my truck like Roadrunner style. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm just saying, if, like, if I'm a cat and there's like deafening noise from 40 cup cars happening, I'm not walking towards it. Like, 36, it gets what it gets. Caleb. Yeah, 36. <laughs> Calm down over there. <laughs> <laughs> Only the charter teams. <laughs> Do we have any uh, animal plant stories this week? We need to talk oh. to Ed when he gets back. I bet he's I was, got some Ed, shit. Ed he's said he fight. has stories, and he said he has footage, and I'm very oh, excited for when he gets yeah, back. We got, we got a teaser last night. It's sick. <laughs> he's busy uh, exploring that. the rest of the L.A. area, I think, today and tomorrow. He might get even LA. more. Probably will get even more stories. I'm excited for when he's back. Um, it's just a shame that this is the last episode of this show ever, so... Yeah. I'll never... Unfortunately, I'll those stories. Last yeah, I appreciate you coming on. I was, uh... I was supposed to be a snowmobiling this... Or snowmobiling. Filming, filming snowmobile races this weekend, but... It got cancelled due to I would to love to weather. see Cody on a snowmobile, by the way. <laughs> Dude, I would, I would die first, like, 20 seconds. Just fly into a tree. Yeah. <laughs> I should have lots of animal planet stories for this year. <laughs> yeah. That mm. I was honestly thinking about that watching your video about the short track tour. I was like, oh my god, Slap's going to some new like hole in South dude, Carolina was, every dude, week. When I, was, I was fucking looking up like photos of like Lawrence County Speedway and fucking Lancaster Motor Speedway. And they all everything that popped up like Google Image is like man shot at Lancaster Motor Speedway <laughs> after <hard. laughs> 
<laughs> was like all these like, like stories of people being like murdered in the track, and I was like, I don't know if I want to go to Lancaster anymore. <laughs> murdered in the track. You're gonna be peeing on a lot of benches at these places, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna well, out. We'll, we'll do a bathroom review <laughs> <laughs> for every single one, and uh, I, I've heard horror stories of Sumter Speedway. <laughs> I, I'm not going to out exactly where he's at, but uh, I do remember distinctly going through the Wikipedia page for uh, where Ed lives and most of the like notable people just being serial killers, <laughs> which I guess is the the person equivalent of you going through the tracks most notably known. Dude, it was hilarious, dying. too, because we, we were like we reacted to it live because he came to us like, dude, I found this Wikipedia page, like a bunch of famous people from where I live. And he thought it was gonna be like like celebrities, musicians, whatever. It's like, nope, serial killer, mass murder, serial killer. <laughs> just, it's like, oh, this guy murder. played football. Oh, oh serial I killer. See. Oh no. I see it. I'm turning back. Do up. you see it? Do you see what Can I you see? It? Was that it? Is that Animal Planet? We have any Animal Planet? Uh, I I'll be back on the road in like three weeks. So we'll we'll be back and running. And yeah, like Cody's like the month. only person who's been to any races this year. So Trace, do we have any like Walmart animals? Uh, I have a literal animal. Somebody who pretended to have a service dog had it shit on the floor. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> That's perfect animal planet. That happened. I was on the way to break, and uh, oh no! So that, you know, the management had to clean it up because I wouldn't fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> the old fake service animal. I think that was uh, well. A lot of smelly ass people in Walmart, like just yeah, yeah. That'll smell happen. There, they reek of pot, a lot of bo. Like you, the people you can smell before you can see them. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just... like going back to the uh, anime conventions back in the day. There's always at least a few <laughs> motherfuckers that just don't wear fucking deodorant because they think they don't have to because it's a big crowd. I was like, no, nah, dude, we know who the fuck you are. <laughs> People who are just nose blind to living in their own slime all the time. Uh, the Magic Gathering section of PAX every year is like that. <laughs> These motherfuckers need to immerse themselves in a fucking shower. <laughs> my immersion. <laughs> my immersion. My immersion. How about you immerse yourself in a shower? <laughs> you talking about immersion? Oh, you, you literally smell like beans, bro. Animal oh. Planet. She's a uh, she's a little fighty right now because she's oh, got. I think going on. Uh, oh, I see another cat. I see another one sneaking yeah, up. Yeah, I see another blob <laughs> back there. The, the shadow of it, the Up blur. The cool. Thinking now she just shed all over me. So. <laughs> <laughs> got excited by this story. Yeah, she's she's been fighty lately because she's got an eye thing going on. So every time I like, uh, I'm oh. like oh, don't touch my face. And I'm like, well, I gotta look at your face because I gotta see if you're like in some in trouble. <laughs> yeah, she's fine. Just fat. <laughs> yeah, these things happen. Yeah, <laughs> we're working on it. Uh, all right, uh, it's time media for the check-in. media check-in. Caleb, actually, I'm glad you're here because I last night watched the first episode of The Last of Us. Banger um, show. It is very true to the game. Oh, There's yep. going to be, I guess, episode one spoilers of The Last of Us in case you're m- more behind than I am, and I'm what five weeks behind? Seven weeks behind. I was an <laughs> Xbox fanatic, so I've never played the games. I don't care. I've never played it, but I've watched people play it. Um, and it is like, like there's, there's, I mean, it just follows the game for the first little bit. I mean, there's differences. Yeah. I mean, it's, isn't it amazing? Like the Halo TV show fucking sucked because oh, the showrunners never watched or never played the video games and like wanted yeah. to do their own thing. Like, but you can literally just make like a frame for frame, like, retelling of the video game and it's the, like the, the fucking banger the I car mean, scene was pretty yeah, much dude, like dude, shot yes. for shot and well, the i mean it was blue mostly ball a section oh. yeah they uh i feel i don't know why i feel like this is something rusty would like there's a thing that happens in the game in that scene that they like tease in the show and it almost happens and then it's like oh psych and then a different thing happens i really yeah, enjoyed so that. it's like it's it's shock value for people that haven't seen it, but also for the people that have seen it, they're like, oh shit, and then yeah. it doesn't happen. And yeah. yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, I mean, it's just I so I think last time I was on, I was only on episode four, maybe, and 
it's just it's so good with how true they are to it but also they're they're able to expand on the world and the universe as a whole without like shitting on it to where it's like really like a really good adaptation and you get this whole like uh cuz you're you're only one episode in so i mean there's stuff later on that'll happen where it's like there are hints of it throughout the tv show or not the tv show hints of it throughout the game that they that they go in depth and expand on in in the tv show and it, it is so good i've been that's great the last the last three episodes i have shed tears and that is crazy because i don't think i felt a single emotion for the past year leading up to watching it so <laughs> they they managed to strike a balance of like people who played the game love it people who didn't play the game still yeah. love it because it's like genuinely good television yeah, that's it's, pretty cool it's so fucking good it's it's if not like the best tv show so far this decade probably um it's, I mean, it's one of them in the past, like, 10, 15 years. It's really fucking good. Damn. Big praise. Uh, I also finished Clarkson's Farm Season 2. Fantastic. Very, very much enjoyed it. Um, I already kind of talked about it. It was good. I, uh, I recently started watching Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law. Uh, that show's incredible, by the way, if you've never seen it. It takes all the Hanna-Barbera cartoons and puts them into, like a law office law show aren't you like 15 years behind the curve yeah, on this like, listen i didn't watch it when it came out i didn't <laughs> i just started watching it now as if you haven't if you haven't seen harvey birdman <laughs> fucking watch i'm it. not it's great it's fantastic yeah it's right. it, dude the story behind how that got made and um space goes coast to coast and c lab 2021 like, dude, that was just, like, the guys who were, like, running Adult Swim got access to all these, like, Hanna-Barbera properties. And they're like, what's the craziest, stupidest shit we can do with all this shit? It, 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 the <laughs> manslaughter case where they had to defend, uh, where Harvey had to defend uh, Speed Buggy. Mm -hmm. They also did a pot, like, a pot case about, with, uh, with the Scooby gang, but wasn't really about pot. It's good. snacks. That's good. <laughs> good. Sweet. Anything else we're uh, watching or playing? Oh, I want to add a slap. If you want to watch a oh. good Halo thing, uh, the movie Forward Unto Dawn is really good. It's a live action Halo film. I'll give it a shot. I enjoyed it a lot. Speaking of live action movies, I watched the Netflix 2022 movie All Quiet on the Western Front. I just watched that last night. Damn. Is it as good as everybody is saying? It it is, does not follow like the book that much. Like you could have easily just called this, you know, something else, like completely unrelated to the book, and it would have passed as uh, its own independent uh, movie. But uh, it it did it, it really is really fucking good. Like the tank scene, <laughs> yeah, and then like, everything starts rumbling, and everybody's like wondering like what the fuck is going on, and then the tanks like roll up and dude, my. It, I mean, uh... It is just, it is, it's like mechanized murder on a scale that, that people at that time didn't think was possible. And like seeing it for the first time. The only thing that like irked me was this takes place in like 1918, the last year of the war. And because I'm a f fucking history nerd, I'm like, these tanks have been around for two years. They had already invented like an anti-tank rifle. They knew what they were up against. It shouldn't have been a surprise, but you know, I'd like take that like, part of my brain like throw it out of <laughs> out the window there are like some historical inaccuracies uh like the final charge right before the armistice that they show it like germans doing this that was actually americans in real life that did that final attack right before the armistice that was completely and utterly useless and didn't have to happen yeah, because well, you know, the word didn't travel that fast then, so they signed the armistice and they took. No, it. they they the armistice had been signed like five a.m. that morning. They had like wired everybody, told like, hey, at eleven a.m. everything's done with. And hmm. so an American got American general or I think it was a colonel got word of this and like, well, we're not gonna go down just sitting down in our trench. And he wanted to go attack this train station that wasn't really that necessary or whatever. And you know, thousands of people fucking died over absolutely nothing. I was under the assumption that it was because. Word in travel. I didn't know that, but I mean, leave it to America to be like, no, nah, fuck it. We want the train station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the first battle that Americans got involved in in 1917 was really 
fucked up because we we went in there and like one of our generals is, was being told by all the British and French advisors like look if you're going to attack this position you got to do this and you know you got to watch out for all this and you know you got to move into the trench sideways so you not like taking fire from the front and all this and the American general literally said to him y'all been fighting this war for three years and you hadn't made any headway we're going to fight it our way and we sent a bunch of guys like head first headlong into like this hail of gunfire and like 10,000 oh men God. died in an afternoon America. Like, it's so <laughs> anyway. fucking crazy like the humanity really the yeah, well, quantity yeah. of fucking life that was yeah. lost like because it's a what was it like 17 or 18 million people had died in that war and it's like holy fuck it, like, it wasn't uncommon for 300,000 to 500,000 people to die like in an afternoon <laughs> like on a major offensive it, have you have you guys heard about the battle of the frontiers in like the first month of the war like the french didn't have camouflage they wore like bright blue coats and red pants and like these like little red fezzes and all this shit and they marched into fucking battle in smoke formation them too. And in formation, like 50,000 Frenchmen died in an afternoon. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the yeah, Germans just had a quick. turkey shoot, and that was, yeah. that was it. Well, World War One was like the, the change from traditional warfare as an art form slash like honorable thing into literally just to kill as many of you as possible. Shout out to uh, Wars. <laughs> all right anything yeah, else we're on uh... the western front if you've never read the book it's actually pretty good but if you have read the book you're gonna be very irked and if you're a history nerd like me you're gonna be like that shouldn't have happened that happened two years ago you fucking ah. <laughs> it's the same with people watching ford versus far and being like that's that's auto club <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> which by the way stupid argument because the auto club grandstands actually look more like old daytona than current daytona does that is true get fucked so I saw a screenshot of that literally today on Twitter, and I was like, wait, actually, that makes a lot of sense, because the Daytona grandstands look completely different, and the Auto Club ones look more like the old, old Daytona. Same with the infield. And now they're going to tear them down. Yeah. I thought yeah. they were leaving All the front stretch. The... Well, they're, they're, they're leaving, like, the, the middle section. Yeah. Um, because the front stretch is not going to be that long. Like, all the stuff by turn one and turn four, they the, the track's not going to be there anymore. So I yeah, fuck this yeah up. not to like not to get back on the NASCAR thing, but I saw like some rumbling on Twitter that the Auto Club track president was talking about like a, some big announcement coming up, and there's been a bunch of uncertainty around the the short track anyway. Yeah. So I'm I'm interested to see what that. Sell the rest be. of the land, move it elsewhere. It's just bank it at 55 degrees and just run mm. like a bowl. It's a fucking bowl. <laughs> That's what Texas should do. Texas should just like. No, flat, flat and Texas no, start over. No, no, no. Make it like Bristol, half mile, but give it 40 degree banks. <laughs> be done with it. We can do that if we decide to tear down old Texas first. Yeah, fine. That's fair. <laughs> uh, anything else? They should make a tiny Texas where like 55 degree banking and it's still the D shape. <laughs> the quad oval, but it's only like a half mile. <laughs> like insane. a super Rockingham. <laughs> that would be insane. Uh, Anything else we're watching and or playing this week? What are we up to? I've been played a lot of Sea of Thieves. Oh, hell yeah. Love that game. Rusty wanted us to play that once, and then we never did it. It's true. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm not sure you guys would like it as much. Damn. That's not, okay. like, uh, that's not, so like, it's not me like, shitting on you as abilities. But <laughs> I know. If you don't like, like the Age of Sail and piracy and stuff like that, it's probably really not a game for Listen, you. Listen, I'll have you know, I got like 60% of the way through Assassin's Creed 4, okay? How did you not finish Assassin's Creed 4? That game is incredible. <laughs> it was great, you know. It's the best one. The end game was sick, taking down the pirate ships. So. Yeah. It is the only Speaking one Speaking of the Age of Sail, I did watch uh, Master and Commander. I just watched that too. <laughs> fucking dope, by the That's way. The it was so good. Another fucking history nerd part of my brain, like the actual like book that was uh, based off of, like the uh, the French ship, the Archon, was it called? Uh, don't remember. The Ar Archon was the French ship they were going after. And in reality, that was actually the USS Constitution. It was an American ship. Yep. But the uh, in Hollywood, they were like, uh, if the Americans are the bad guys, that'll well, it's not going to track too well, <laughs> especially yeah. in like post 9-11 America. So let's make them French instead. The, the Americans hate Frenchies. Yeah, we can always hate the French. 
it pays a lot of attention to all the small details for that era too like yeah everything, everything except that is like fucking spot yeah. on i love it how the ship is run how the commanders talk to each other what roles mm-hmm. on if they even show that like there's kids like eight nine ten years old working as like cadets to become yeah midshipmen little little kids like little 12 year olds giving orders just kid it's fucking yeah, just some it's child wild. labor it's wild it's wild absolutely so it's so good and the battle scenes are so good <laughs> yeah oh man that was the, the most successful media check and i think we've ever had <laughs> that was great we didn't uh, coordinate right. that either. That was organic. Yeah, that was just. Yeah, I just, didn't know what the fuck. I brought up like four different things, and everyone's like, "Oh, I just watched that." Um. All right. With that, it is time to read some mail. Send in your fucking mail. Wash your fucking hands. Slap. Send in your fucking mail. Send them, send them guys. guys. Wash your fucking hands. Slap. I don't give a fuck, man. You better send in those emails at this point. Welcome to fan mail. Fan mail. Fan mail. Fan mail. Fan mail. Fan, fan mail. It's a banger. That's an all-timer. Dude, it's been stuck in my <laughs> head. Certified like, shrimp classic. I can't tell you how <laughs> satisfying that was to hear because it's like literally before we pressed record, it's been like stuck in my head. That's all it's been going is just fan Welcome mail. Welcome to fan mail. Fan <laughs> mail. Yeah. It's catchy I love, as fuck. I love how that came up organically. Like that's one of the ones that... I think it was Rusty just started singing it, and then <laughs> Ben made it into a song. <laughs> uh, all right, we got four emails this week. Uh, remember, if you want to send us stuff That's to four read too many. on the show, questions, comments, concerns, fan art, don't don't make fan art. Hours presents at gmail.com. We'll read it on the show. No, make fan art. Uh, all right. Uh, first one comes in from Sonata. No ludes. <laughs> Actually, never mind. Don't make fan art then. <laughs> do make fan art. Um, Sanok says, "Hello, shrimps. Sanok here again. First of all, I saw Vienna sausages in the mall and figured I had to try them. And I have to say, I don't see the appeal at all. <laughs> was it was it Armor Brand or was it Libby's? Because Libby's is trash. I don't know. What do they have in Brazil? I know he lives in Brazil. Uh, it's probably Hereford." That's sure. like all Brazilian. Are you fucking, <laughs> fucking meat connoisseur? What the fuck? No, because you can buy here for it here in America. It says product of Brazil on it. Oh my god damn it. So How do you just have the fucking like meat by, like sorted by you country in your head? Where I keep wow. all the canned meat. Like, what the you fuck is wrong that? with your brain? Like the what? canned meat lore. <laughs> Casually knows the origin. I made a whole video on spam, and you think I don't know these things? <laughs> I put it on main. What even a side project? Uh, secondly, uh, who do we think could replace Harvick in the four car? Someone in the oh. Ford pipeline, like Cole Custer or Todd Gulen? Someone else yeah. entirely, like Christopher Bell or Stenhouse? Either option could be interesting to see. My money is on Stenhouse, though. P.S. Wash your fucking hands, slap. Dude, if they could poach Christopher Bell, that would yes. be a fucking yes. game changer. Yes, Christopher Bell, this is the timeline. He's going to be the flagship at Stuart Haas for the next 15 years. Because you saw with like Joe Gibbs, he was he's not letting him dirt race. Tony Stewart's going to cut the check, let him run whatever fucking dirt race he wants, and he's going to drive the four car for the rest of goddamn time. Hearing it that, now, the that, 20 that curse could continues. Be the deal. That could be it right there. I mean, nobody just, just the dirt stuff. If Tony Stewart throws him that bone and gives yeah. him a close That's amount over. of money to what Gibbs has given him, like he'll, he'll make the jump. Nobody saw Kyle Busch leaving uh, RCR, so anything's possible. Joe Gibbs is fucked. That's like, <laughs> dude. Imagine Damn. if they had both Larson and Bell on that team. I oh know. my god! Oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> They were like, nah, let's roll with Eric Almarola again. Fucking let's put <laughs> Chase Briscoe in the car. Yeah, that's good. Dude, imagine the like Larson Bell Briscoe like mm, dirt that's the squad. Dream timeline, yeah. Mm. That'd be sick. I that I that's the correct answer to that question, Caleb. Thank yeah. you. That was great. Yeah. Uh all right. Next one comes in from our friend from down under, Andrew R. Uh he says, Legend. Good evening. Uh so this this came in um before Last week's episode came out. Um, so he says, I thought I'd have a go at making a theme song for Slap's crazy ass moments in history. Mm-hmm. Damn. Uh, obviously, cranked out on the only instrument <laughs> benefiting such a task. And he has sent a picture. Did you, I did you, did you, did you, I shit you not. 
<laughs> Damn. It is. Make this. It is the spam Joe. It oh, is a oh, can oh, of oh, spam. Oh God, what? you can't see this. They Mother of God. get the idea. Let me uh, let me see if I can bring it up on the. I've, on the I've seen people make banjos like out of shovels, but that's the first time I've seen one with a spam can. It is not a very large image, but we can attempt to. <laughs> Damn, to, we can bring it up. him. Y'all got uh, any more than pixels? There it is. What the I don't know if this is his life. picture, but he calls this the spam Joe. It looks no, like he called it the Smap Joe. Uh, a ruler through a spam cam with a binder clip and I'm presuming an elastic band. Um, is that like a, a yardstick? Or I guess it'd be, be right a meter, back. meter, meter may stick. I'll be attacking Emilio. I'll be right back. Oh, we oh, have trouble. <laughs> cat, like, cat cat fight. Fight. So I have not listened to this clip yet. Uh, and I'm going to play it for the first time. <laughs> Straight off the phone? Straight off the phone. Jesus Christ. I mean, we don't do this live. We're good. Uh, all right, here goes. This is just going to be a slur. Recently, there was a tale of the Chinese balloon. Do you see what's happening? They're coming for us. They're coming for us. They're going to take out everything. It's all over. It's all, you're going to kill all of us. Oh, we got two trillion dollars just missing. We don't know where it went. <laughs> It's just probably the worst way to go, honestly. Molasses Pompeii. <laughs> <laughs> that, and the spam uh, pretty joke. Good. It's pretty good. It's <laughs> pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> we, we might have to bust that out once or twice. <laughs> That's the special edition fucking two trillion dollars oh missing edition. <laughs> you, gotta do, you gotta do a spam related crazy moments in history now. <laughs> All right, Andrew, thank you. That was brilliant. That was fantastic. <laughs> I love just the, like, a do-do-do-do-do in the background. <laughs> this is just slap going on about <laughs> shit. That was damn good. Uh, oh, my God. We got an email from Harley Payne, and there are, count them up, six <laughs> paragraphs to this oh thing. Oh, my God. They're not long paragraphs, but it's just a lot of text. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry uh, that happened, or I'm happy yeah. for you, but I'm not reading it. <laughs> uh, uh, he says, I happen to live within walking distance of... I happen to live within walking distance of the site of the very first Zaxby's. I guess don't look that up. And if I can remember to budget my calories right, I will see if I can try the, the goaded with the swow sandwich. <laughs> Let us know. Um... If you're looking for a new crazy-ass moment in history, I implore you to look into the time an SR-71 pilot did a high-speed pass over a commercial airport. Insane. Do you know about oh, that? Oh, the, the LA oh, speed check, yeah. Probably. All right. Uh, that could be I a thing. I can do that right now. I can do that off the top of my head. Um, question. What's the weirdest snippet of a conversation you've ever caught out of context? One of those, oh my god, they were roommates moments. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> A good week. Wash your hands. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever overheard some weird that. shit. Uh, yeah, like I, I have stuff. Walk up on like two coworkers talking about like how much they'd have to get paid to suck dicks. <laughs> that was interesting. I'm glad that's not my job. <laughs> just just, just completely out of context. Like, dude, I wouldn't do it for under 50k, bro. I wouldn't suck your dick for 50k. And then 50k. The back room in my job wouldn't go less than a th than a million. So, <laughs> what? You know, I do it for like fifteen and a half. These guys are stupid. Are stupid. Well, high, yeah. bro. What the hell? Fifteen an hour? <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you didn't hear that. <laughs> I will say there are some times I jump into shrimp Discord and there's some goofy shit going on. <laughs> well, the closest thing I've got. It's been just some very uh, yeah, hairy like, conversations. I don't know. With how my brain works, it's just like, like in the moment, I'll be like, what the fuck did you just say? And then I don't remember it. Um, yeah, I was about to say, like, I hear stuff and then I, I don't like write it down. It's called dementia, Caleb. I want to look into the. <laughs> Why is the, the text purple on do I have dementia? <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, one more email comes in from Jack. Hello, shrimps and guest. If there is one, there is. There's two actually, I guess. Who? Uh, Jack here. 
What was a racing moment that made you laugh loudly and how stupid it was? Mine was when they cut to like 14 cars wrecking in the first overtime of this year's Daytona 500 or Ross Chastain cutting the track at Indy with the excess road. Thanks for the podcast and happy last episode from Jack. I want Caleb to go first so I make sure I don't accidentally steal the same answer as him. What was the question? <laughs> A racing moment that made you Caleb laugh out loud. Dementia. Are you playing the meme or do you actually not know? Uh, I think I heard Cody say it. A racing moment that made me laugh out loud. Yes. Because of how stupid it was. When uh, a few auto club workers brought out the shovel in their bucket. <laughs> I'm not putting that photo on screen, but it was a pretty good photo. I'm glad you said that so you don't take my answer of when the curb came up at the Indianapolis. Oh, yes, we were just fucking talking. And and half the field is wrecked into the. Dude, oh my god. Literally, the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen was like (laughs) Joey Logano going off the corner and then like eight cars following him off into the grass. And it's just more than what the fuck is like It was like 15. (laughs) No, it was a lot. (laughs) The the one that strikes me is uh, Hungary 2021 when everyone comes into pit on the formation lap except for Lewis Hamilton who stays on the dry tires and they literally do the start sequence with him alone on the grid as everyone else is putting the right tires in and they do the lights and everything and it's just him there's just one single car even, starting the race not even in the first box <laughs> yeah <laughs> And then he goes, and then, <laughs> and then he goes through turn one, and then everyone comes out of the pits with the right tires. And then... did he win that race? No, no Esteban Ocon did. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> no, no, um, you are caught out with the wrong tires. They completely biffed it. He would have won it if if he'd come in the pits with everyone else. But it was just him alone. It was hilarious. Uh, one of mine actually came from a rocket powered Mohawk video. Uh, shout out rocket powered Mohawk of Paul Deresta on the radio running DTM, I think, some kind of sports car tournament championship. And he's like, should I pit? And and like as he he's they're like no. And as he, they say no, and he just pulls into the pits anyway, and then tries to blame it on his radio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can find you the clip. I know he raced DTM for a bit. I did not know about that clip. That's pretty good. Can I amend uh, my answer to when Simon Pagno and the <laughs> the i racing in the car series? I heard intentionally the lap took out Lando Norris. Lando Norris. He was like, I was trying to pit. That was his excuse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my favorite bit is every time I go to the Charlotte Roval race, somebody takes out a sign and has it pinned to the front of their car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and last, last year, me and Ben are like, we uh, finally somebody took out a sign. I forget who it was, but we were like, yeah, yeah, they did the thing. They did the thing. <laughs> All right, let me bring up this. Uh, let me bring up this trace clip. It's great. It's. I've a- not seen this ever. A plus. Turn the sound on so you can because it's not subtitled. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, they said no, like as he was coming in, but he also yeah. came in before they answered the question. He asked to be, really to late, be fairly, too. like he genuinely might not have heard the answer. <laughs> you also got to ask like sooner than like five seconds before you're supposed to be coming into the. Yeah, it sounds like he couldn't hear them. It, are you kidding? He totally just turned into the pits as they said no. He asked well, the recording. Seconds. Like he, asked, he might not have heard them the way he says he asked, his radio doesn't work. This might work. be out of context. I want to see if he asked more times, like sooner than this first one. Y'all defended Paul the rest. How dare you? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. That. Well, I mean, if he's asking don't. to pit, I mean, he's got to be. Th- if he's asking to pit and he has no answer, just don't pit. Like, because they're not. Yeah, that's true. Because the chance, the chance is that they're not ready for you. If you stay out, I mean, you just come back around. Yeah. yeah, and like he asked literally 4.3 seconds before he turned into the pits anyway. That's, that's what I'm yeah. saying. He gave him like no warning. He should have asked like half a lap before, not like about five it, seconds before the pit radio. lane. Like, my radio didn't work. Like, yeah. I was trying to pit. <laughs> I trying to pit. Gloves and steering wheel. I know you I got a good one, Rusty. 
Uh, nothing uh, real life related off the top of my head, but <clears throat> what about when Danny? What is it? Why he tripped the hefty Rusty bag on Rusty the knows. front of the car at Homestead in 2019. That Rusty knows pretty... what he wants to say. What do you mean? You know what you want to say? Uh, give me a hit. Give me a hit. You know. You've been watching NASCAR for like 30 years. I mean, you, oh, you, you can't. Got me, you... you got me caught off guard. I don't know off the top. What's of my head. the Caleb? What is it? I mean, I. Nothing in particular, <laughs> fucking. You're not on the show ever again. You're coward, coward. I mean, I have, Jeez. I have like four honorable mentions. I figured Rusty had at least one. Well, I wouldn't say all these incidents make me laugh out loud. If anything, it's like, like, like on some, like, I don't know, some deep seated, like, I don't even know, passion, if you will. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> I, but are I you talking? Are you talking about Road America, Caleb? Well, like off no the top Gregson? of my head, that that was a good one. Yeah, it was a pretty right. good one. The cheese, um, dude. <laughs> no, but I'm thinking like the 2018 Roval. I thought that's what Slap was going to mention when Brad Keselowski led the field off the cliff into the fucking. To talk about that too when <laughs> yeah. he fucking led the army off the fucking cliff and everybody. That's that's, that's up there. Him. Like in like what the fuck am I watching right now? Territory. <laughs> Yeah, so but somebody like standing next to me, he's like, "Oh, Brad biffed it." I was like, "Kyle Larson wasn't gonna make that turn either." I think everybody judged <laughs> off of him, and he completely yep. fucked it and took everybody else yeah. out with him. Yeah, show it. Press camera God button to activate movie it. shooting. <laughs> yeah, damn it. No, speaking of the Roval, I'll get one more Roval story. Uh, mm. During a lengthy red flag, me Ben pulls out his phone. And uh, the Cleveland Guardians are in like the middle, like a 17th inning, 0 0 tie with whoever <laughs> the fuck they're playing. And like, we're just watching this, you know, bottom of the uh, was it, 16th or 17th inning. First at bat for Cleveland at the bottom of the 16th or whatever. Instant home run. Boom. Knocks it out there. And we're just like, well, no, everybody's just like waiting for this red flag to be over with. We're going like, <laughs> walk off home run. Discord did not like you. Holy yelling. noise, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got everybody starts like looking at us like, what the fuck are these two idiots talking about? But, like, yeah, just we just watched like the we just watched the worst baseball, baseball game of all time finally end. <laughs> you're in Charlotte and your guys are freaking out over a Cleveland baseball game up in the grandstands. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Ow. been a pleasure. No. That we was gotta name the episode. Hoop Hours 33. What is this thing called? Double Dale. The Auto Club Cat. Yeah, get the, the shovel. Cat. Get the shovel. <laughs> or do we just call it the shovel in the bucket? <laughs> the shovel in the bucket. <laughs> All right, that's it. It's done. Trace, thanks for coming back on, talking yeah. about F1. Looking yeah, forward to the season. Yeah, looking forward to the season. I'll, I'll follow NASCAR on and off because now I've got a team, so. Go track it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Caleb, thanks for showing up when Ed didn't. We'll yeah, see you next time for, he doesn't. Thanks Second for having me Ed. on the last episode of the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, we'll see you never. Never. Dead. Bye, bitch. Man. That's rude. Don't Be talk to the show. Like I love that. Caleb. I speak. Are oh, you talking about Caleb? I don't have an episode that's named that I'm dead. That's true. Cody's missed two episodes and has been called It's Dead and Cody's Dead. I have to be leaving permanently. It's dead. <laughs> <laughs>